And now, after a whole semester on the topic, can we finally find an answer to the one question that has been driving most of our discussion? A question that has eluded a definition for several months now? And what is that question? What does it all come down to? What would I say if someone was to come up to me and ask, so what exactly is a composition? And for that matter, what is composing? When I think of composing, my mind immediately jumps to composers, like Bach, Mozart, people who stand at the front of an orchestra and look like they're leading an aerobics class. But is that what we mean here? Surely freshman 103 students aren't all standing around learning to be composers by discovering how to wave their arms around in the air. So what is a composition? Who gets to decide what a composition is? The WPA outcome statement for first year composition focuses a lot on the word writing, and though they use the word text and genres, they never mention the word paper. It is easy to infer that they mean a paper, since some of their outcomes like paragraphing and grammar deal with what we consider a paper, but they never mention it. Dictionary.com defines composition as the act of combining parts or elements to form a whole. But that seems awfully broad and might be too broad for most people. So what do we consider a composition? For most students and teachers, a composition is a paper, the dreaded writing response, an essay, a research paper, an academic paper, or whatever you want to call it. Richard Lanham just considers this question in the opening of his article on the Q question. He mentions that the gut reaction people have when we try to think outside the composition box is that we must protect traditional writing, protect the book. The book is sacred. But why? Why must papers and books be held onto with death grips? Types of writings have clearly changed, so why not the, why not the medium itself? Vaguely showed us how good writing evolved over the years. In the early 1900s, students were judged on not only if they had read so-called great works, but if they had digested them in the correct ways. But just later in that same centuries, students now had to struggle with providing authentic, moving, personal pieces that bared their true self to the world, or more accurately, to their teacher. These pieces were now judged to be good writing, but are still writing, and specifically writing papers. So how do you move past papers? How do you now define the composing process? Berlin claims that this isn't a simple task. If we are to trust him, how we determine compositions is not only based on your own rhetorical theory, but how you conceive of reality and truths. So in order to find a composition, I now have to realize my own theories of realities and truths? This is some deep stuff. Welcome to the real world. But to continue along this thought, Berlin breaks it down into four different theories. It begins with the near Aristotelians, near neo Aristotelians, or whatever. Let's just call them the new Aristotle dudes. So these Aristotle dudes think that the world exists out there and is noble through the senses, but you can't really trust your senses, so you need to rely on something he called syllogistic reasoning, which he came up with kind of pretentious if you ask me. But basically, reality and truth are the noble and can be communicated. Next are the current traditionalists. They say that the material world exists and you can know it through your senses, but instead of relying on some grand reasoning, you, you utilize the experimental method. Truth is out there waiting to be correctly perceived. Moving on to the Neoplatonists, or Plato lovers, let's keep it simple. They state that truth exists, but since the world is always changing, it's not out there, it's in you. Truth is discovered within each person and cannot be communicated or taught. Language is then used to help you realize the errors within yourself that are blinding you from the truth. Lastly, we have the neo rhetoricians Since their name is easy to say, we'll leave it at that. Rhetoric is epistemic and used to arrive at the truth. So truth then are dynamic and changing and are the result of a process. Language shapes, organizes, and creates truth. Composers here have a hand in not only creating meaning, but also reality. So who do I choose? Who do I believe? My simple questioning of these theories helps to point me to the only one that makes sense. So if you have the ability to invent truth and language creates these through a process, the idea of what a composition is is constantly changing. Every time someone composes a non-paper work, the definition of a composition changes with it. Even the difficulty of defining composition shows that truths and realities are part of an ongoing process. But how does one compose then? How do you create a composition? Cirque likes boxes over essays, and I'm with him there. I love boxes, especially shoe boxes. 
But sadly, it's not just any old box, it's the formation and the ideas in the box that matters. Some of the concepts Cirque advocates for in a composition are the following. Associational images, aesthetics, desire, fascination and significance for the composer, an ongoing process, invention, and an element of play. So what if I was to create my own box, perhaps using the environment and my love of trees as the overarching theme? Let's see. First, I would want to start to think outside the box by replacing my bland, boring box with my recycling bin. Now what to put in it? How about a childhood favorite, Fern Gully? Then my aloe plant, my old stuffed animal, my tote bag, my bird watching guide. Now can these images be composed in such a way to lay the foundation of my own box composition? Is an argument beginning to form? What do you think? But we must move on to Shipka. She has a lot to say about a composition and what makes up one. She's all about redefining, rethinking, rewriting, taking any traditional English word and adding the prefix re to what we think of a composition. Her students composed things such as essays written on clothing or ballet shoes. And then there was Muffy, who composed a dance in response to an assignment. Could I do that? Can I dance my way through a composition? Huh, I don't seem to have the same skills. Perhaps if I added structure. But if I do that, I feel like I'm just going to end up looking like a mime trapped in a box. So after all this, what is a composition? How do you define it? Is it even definable? And if the definition is constantly changing, how do you compose such a thing? The truth seems to be that almost anything can be a composition. So what will you do? Will you take the box approach? Will you dance your way? Or... Will you create a wildly entertaining video, like me, 